Okay, we're back here live at Strata Conference. I'm John Furrier with SiliconAngle.com. This is theCUBE, our program. We go out to the events and talk to folks uh, uh, that are in the hallway, keynoting, entrepreneurs, developers. We have the CEO of InfoObjects, Yashi Rishi. Yeah. Yeah. Yadav. Yadav? Yadav, is that yeah. how Okay, great, welcome to the program. So tell us about your company. Yeah. So, um, we are around seven year old company. Uh, we, uh, we have always been focusing on uh, open source uh, technologies and from last one, one and a half years, we have got into the big data Hadoop. Uh, our positioning uh, is same which was before Hadoop that we always, always work with the open source uh, stack, nothing else, nothing proprietary. So that's the positioning we have been having and we are getting a lot of traction by that. So let's talk about uh, what you're seeing in the, in the market today. So what's your take on the whole competition, we just had Intel on, Greenplum announced the distribution, uh, Hortonworks, Cloudera, now there's all these different distributions. What do you think of that and what's your, what's your point of view on that? Okay, so my, honestly I would say uh, the services companies like us, uh, they kind of lose money because of it. Uh, uh, the reason is that uh, it delays the decision making process of the client. I mean if somebody has to spend say a couple of million dollars and they see say five or six distributions, right, they get confused and all those distributions look similar. So. So, be specific, what do you mean you're going to lose money? So the decision, the slowing down of, the, of which version to go with slows down the purchases? Is exactly, what so, so what I see in last six months is that we see a lot of POCs happening, right? So there's a lot of interest, uh, you talk to anyone and they say that they have big data and they have big problems to solve, right? But uh, a lot of POCs are happening, but it's not moving much beyond that because everybody is waiting and watching. Okay, so you think it's a bad thing for the ecosystem? It's a bad thing for the ecosystem uh, when, when everybody has different flavors. Uh, so. But if it's if it's all Apache, so, the argument would so, be. So what's happening is, I mean, uh, I mean, you see companies like Cloudera and Hortonworks, and uh, I mean, I really thank them because they have contributed so much uh, to the open source. Uh, but at the same time, uh, what happens is that uh, one one thing is that the uh, pure Apache distribution, right? But then what happens is that everybody adds something proprietary to it, right? whether it's Intel manager or Cloudera manager, with all the good things they have in that. But, uh, so what that does is that leads, to, that leads to the delays in the decision making, that which one they want to go with. So, so if Cloudera goes out CDH, which is their management, mm -hmm. it's still open source. So does that slow you down? A Cloudera manager is not open source. The CDH. So no, CDH is their Hadoop distribution. Oh, their manager is their proprietary. Yeah, yeah but CDH yes. is open source. Yeah, CDH is open source. Yeah. That, that's the bundling. So, so yeah. are they cutting you out of the services business or? No, I'm not saying, no, we are getting a lot of traction and uh, that's the reason I'm saying that, I mean, thanks to Cloudera and other companies that they've opened this they, whole... They actually commit. So let's talk about EMC Greenplum. What do you think about their announcement, Pivotal HD? Yeah, so Pivotal HD, again, uh, that's again, uh, they have their own um, uh, proprietary uh, stuff there and that again leads to more confusion in the market. Do you uh, think they have a credibility issue? Uh, EMC being EMC, I'm not sure they would have a credibility issue. They are, uh, they are way too big for that, but... Um, uh, but the overall... And the community might, because they're obviously causing, they actually don't care, right? They're going in saying, hey, we're going to do our way, and they have their own clients that they need to take care of. Exactly, yeah. So, so, so community acceptance is a, uh, that becomes a challenge. So. For, uh, for Greenplum? For Greenplum kind of companies. I mean, I don't want to name companies, but yeah, for, right, well, for, just, for, for the I, big players. I just did. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> what about MapR? What do you think about MapR? So, uh, it's an interesting thing, so what MAPA does is, so on one side you have this Apache Hadoop distribution, right, and on the other side you have API. So what MAPA is doing is, uh, they are saying that, okay, we will comply with the API, uh, but we'll have our own uh, distribution. But they're clear. I mean, you know where they stand, Yeah, right? th th yeah, th th that, that part is good, I mean, uh, but uh, um, at the same time, uh, what's happening is that, what you call a Hadoop distribution, if you just, if you have a software and you just provide a Hadoop API on it and that becomes a Hadoop software, or you just bundle everything together, uh, like what Hortonworks is doing it, and if that is Hadoop software, I mean, what do you call Hadoop? That, that becomes a question then, because, and if you see the big data, I mean, uh, you see every company, everything is big data in Bay Area at present, but. Uh, yeah, we even were joking that SiliconANGLE's going to come out with its own distribution of Hadoop, and yeah. just to kind of, just jump in like everybody else. Yeah. Um, so you're saying, so basically your thesis is, okay, this is fragmenting the marketplace, slows down the pace of deployment. Exactly. Okay, so that's not good. So, you know, newsflash, um, all this kind of slows down. In a way, it's a cold war going on, and so this kind of slows everything down. Yes, I, I do call it a Hadoop war, and I say it's a very local war. Uh, 
So the, the war starts somewhere around Palo yeah, Alto yeah, yeah. and it goes all the way to city. And there is a company which provides all the weapons for the war and they are sitting in Seattle, that's Amazon. Yeah. So, so the, yeah, that's what we joke in the company. So. Yeah, that's, good. that's a good joke. So let's talk yeah. about Amazon for a minute because Amazon obviously has made great strides with AWS. Um, I mean, we love Amazon, we use Amazon. Um, developers love Amazon. Shadow IT, I wrote a post today mm -hmm. about a company called Sky, uh, Skyline uh, Networks just launched a great security product. Um, targeting the cloud, and it's awesome. So there's a lot of clouds happening, we love the cloud. However, uh, Hadoop and moving data in and out of the cloud is challenging. What do you think about the cloud aspect of Hadoop, supporting Hadoop? Um, is it, how early is it, is it ready, is it expensive? What are you seeing with clients? Are they, are they moving there? So, my take on is uh, this, uh, that uh, as everybody knows, the data has gravity. I mean, uh, in our office, in a small company, we are setting this uh, uh, 10 terabyte cluster and it's going to take us 20 days just to move it, based on our uh, 10 GB. Move it what, from bare metal to cloud? Or a big cloud? Uh, no, I'm saying just, just, just moving data. I mean, oh, even, okay. even if you just want to uh, collect some public data, which is 10 terabytes, it's going to take uh, 20 days uh, to do it. So the point I'm trying to make is that whether to adopt cloud or not, I think it depends on companies where their data is sitting. I mean, if you are starting some comp something completely from scratch and uh, you can choose to put all of your data uh, in, uh, in, in AWS in S3, then, because compute is easy, compute doesn't have any gravity, but uh, uh, the data does. So right? gravity equals lock-in. So if uh, I go to Amazon and put all my data in the cloud, do I get lock-in there? So gravity means two things. Number one is that uh, the data, it takes time to move data from one place to another place. And the second thing is, yes, uh, I mean, uh, the data, I mean, y you are logged into uh, Amazon and do you really want to do it or not, so. Let's talk about Hive. So Hive has been kind of the, the whipping post these days for everyone, I've been mean, blaming Hive. Hive's been be beaten up. I mean, Greenplum basically came out and, and said Hive's they kind of use benchmarks, but well, I'll just say, you know, not holding up. And then they even went further to criticize Impala, which is a competitor that's natural. But Hive is very, very well respected in use. So what, what's your take on that? Is it warranted? Is Hive really kind of sucking wind right now? Is it working well or? So I think the, my take is that the reason Hive came into the place was to increase the adoption because there were these people who, the only thing they did was SQL and you didn't want, I mean, I've done Java for 15 years, so I love Java. So for me, probably, uh, writing a MapReduce job is still faster than writing a uh, Hive query because that's what we have done. Uh, but, uh, so Hive did solve a big problem, but uh, now a lot of people get into the latency issues because you don't want to wait for half an hour for your query to run, right? Yeah. So I think a lot of, I mean, a lot of interesting things are happening there. I think uh, Google Dremel also, I think that also changed things that uh, you can come up with a lot of innovative solutions, uh, so. What do you think about uh, Amazon's Elastic MapReduce? Have you played with that at all? Yeah, so we do, I mean, uh, and for a couple of our clients, uh, I mean, uh, they, they, they are running on uh, EC2. So that's great, but as I said, that it depends on uh, where your data is residing. If you're starting a new project and you try to, uh, and you make a strategy that you'll put all the data in S3 or EBS now, which is uh, another thing which, which works uh, far better with uh, EC2, right? Then it becomes easier, but if you have your data, say you have got even say 100 terabytes of data which is residing in your data center, right? Then it becomes a problem. Then you think two times before uh, moving that data there. What, so. what are some of the biggest use cases you're seeing with your customer base right now with uh, Hadoop? Uh, you said a lot of proof of concepts. Uh, someone was kicking around a statistic earlier here in the morning was one in five POCs make it to production. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing the same data? Is that realistic? And what are some of the projects you're working on? So it's kind of interesting. Uh, I mean, I, I've tried to keep it uh, uh, high level because because we have a lot of uh, NDA signed. Uh, but uh, there is yeah, one you don't need to name names. Yeah, yeah. So so for example, there is uh, one company who has got almost seventy percent car users data in America, and it's an old company. It's a uh, almost three billion dollar company. They had that data forever. But now with Hadoop, they are thinking, well, I mean, we have this data, but let's try to make some sense out of it. You know, maybe let's try to get some marketing dollars uh, out of it, right? So, so, so that's one thing. What do they do? Um, so, are they, is it, how is it stored? Uh, at present, they are, I mean, they, they store in uh, regular Oracle and other uh, relational databases, and some of the data is not being stored at all, right? So in the logs and all. But now with the Hadoop, uh, uh, they have this option, right? Okay, so so we, we have the, all this data. Let's let's collect the data and let's try to make sense out of it. Besides this, what's happening is, for example, one company I was talking to, and what they had was that they had uh, uh, location data, lat and long data, right? 
and they wanted to uh, they wanted to merge the data with OpenStreetMap OSM and then try to make some sense out of it for advertisement purposes, right? Uh, in the same way, uh, there's a company which collect uh, the uh, they have electric sensors, so I mean for the for the light sensors and all. And they are saying besides light, but we are, we are also uh, sensing temperatures and all other variables, right? So they are saying, okay, if can we make some sense out there? So I mean, whole in all, uh, what I mean is that uh, any company I talk to, they they have data and they have a lot of use cases of data, right? But uh, how to how to derive intelligence out of it? Uh, number one is that they have data, they don't know whether there's any KPI which actually they are going to get it out of it or not because they never got it, right? But now they see this promise, promise with the Hadoop, right? So I mean, so they, they say that you know this thing looks interesting. We definitely have interest in that. So. Rishi, my final question to you is: as we end this segment, thanks for coming on by the way and giving mm -hmm. your perspective on uh, the Hadoop wars here. Um, is what's your vision with InfoOps? After you've, you've been Java developer for a while, um, looking out over the landscape of, of the big data world and watching it grow and become competitive aggressively with uh, uh, some of the things going on now. What do you think is going to happen? What's your vision for the next uh, couple of years? So, uh, it's, it's kind of interesting. Uh, I think this market is going to explode, not expand. I mean, uh, that's the, I mean, we have been growing at almost 50, 60% every year, and uh, with uh, our whole focus on Hadoop, I'm assuming it's going to be probably two to 300% per year from this year on. So, so we definitely see a lot of, uh, a lot of growth in the market, and, uh, what we do is, uh, so, we, so we had this interesting position in the, uh, uh, being a services company and being an open source purist, three or four years back it was not a big deal, right? But now with Hadoop we have this position that, you know, that people love our position and we, we can get some traction using that. Well, you're an open source purist. I want to just ask well, one more question because that's a great term. What does that mean? I mean, I'm, I'm from the old open source days when it was just starting. We're now in our fourth, fifth generation, depending upon who you talk to of open source. It's a standard. Open source is the way, and open source always wins. So, obviously, you can take that prediction and saying proprietary will lose. So, um, that handicaps Greenplum a little bit. But uh, that being said, what does open source purists mean, and what is the business model for open source? Obviously, Red Hat was a success, and when I remember when Cloudera and um, Hortonworks came out, they were called the Red Hat for Hadoop. Mm -hmm. They're not using that anymore. A little bit different business now. But how does it? How do you see the business model? were evolving, or is it, does it stay the same? Uh, obviously support's a key part of it, but open source will continue. We all agree on that. What is the, the business model and partnerships look like? So it, it is interesting, like for a company like ours, uh, uh, what we are doing is uh, that we have three things uh, uh, in the business model. Number one is a training. Uh, training doesn't earn us a lot of money, but it, gives, it works as a catalyst. Uh, uh, number two is that we uh, the resources right because we, when we train resources a lot of companies uh, need these resources so the skill gap which is a, which uh, I mean uh, every other article you see about open source they talk about the skill gap now so that's where I think there is a lot of uh, uh, money to be made uh, for a pure services company like us like what kind of resources what do you mean like people resources programming people resources, people resources okay, programming resources that that itself is a yeah the, got the, it yeah, that, that's and maybe some automation thing. maybe some software that you know you might write up. Exactly, and uh, and, the, and the third thing is uh, that uh, implementation and support. So, uh. okay, just making some notes here. Love that, and we're always covering because we, Hortonworks is pure play. They want they say they're pure play, but yet they have you know Stinger and they announced new more, two more Apache projects. Mm -hmm. um, so, do you like the Hortonworks business model? I mean, they claim 100% open source. Yeah. So, if I have to choose company uh, which we come closest to, that's Hortonworks. No doubt about that. Yeah. So. Not Cloudera. Hortonworks uh, over Cloudera. Because of the management piece that Cloudera has. Yeah, Hortonworks, I mean, yeah, if, if I have to choose between uh, Hortonworks and Cloudera, I would say Hortonworks. So. Okay, But great. Cloudera, I mean, I am really thankful. They, they started the game, they have, they have really yeah. contributed they have a, a nice lot business. to the community. I mean, they have a nice, they balance it. They have a nice balance. Yeah, and they're doing so. good work. They've, they have the contributors. Yeah. Okay, thank you for coming on theCUBE. Open source breakdown of the business models. We'll be drilling down tomorrow uh, uh, on business model partnerships, business model uh, in Hadoop and open source uh, tomorrow here on theCUBE. We're going to be back with our next guest after this short break. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's coverage of O'Reilly's Strata Conference. Uh, we'll be back with our next guest at this short break. <laughs>